Hi, my name is Tim Kramer and I'm an AEC BIM specialist with Microsoft Resources. Today I'm going to show you the Space Naming Utility, which is an add-in in Revit MEP 2011. It's considered an external tool that has to be downloaded from the Autodesk subscription website and can be downloaded as part of the subscription advantage pack which Autodesk has recently released that contains many other plugins and additional productivity tools that you might be interested in. Let me show you. Here on the Autodesk subscription website you'll see that there are quite a few titles listed under the product enhancements. If I click on the Advantage Pack for Revit MEP 2011, that takes me on to a page which lists some of the different productivity tools that are available, Revit Server Extension, Conceptual Energy Analysis, and the one on the bottom, Revit Extensions, which, if I select, takes me to another page with the actual download. Notice that this download does contain previously released extensions and updates, and I'd like to point out that the space naming utility was originally released as a separate download but is now part of the subscription pack which you can download right here. Now let's go ahead into the software and I'll show you what it looks like once installed. Here we are in Autodesk Revit MEP 2011. Once you've downloaded the extension tools and installed them into Revit, notice that you'll have an add-ins tab across the top. This lists a few new panels but the one I'm going to speak about today is in fact the external tools. If I expand that there are quite a few new tools that are available as part of this installation but it's the space naming utility that I want to talk about today. Now a word about the model. What you see here is a link, an architect's model that has been linked in to Revit and that's typically what the MEP engineer is going to work with. They would start a new project, link in the architect's model, and then start placing spaces in each room so that they can do their design and analysis. If I was to go to the Analyze tab and select on Space, I could attempt to place a space in a room on the model, but what's happening here is the boundary of the room is not being recognized by Revit, and there's a reason for that. If I select the model, go into the properties, click edit type, notice that there is a room bounding radio button that has not been turned on. This is a constraint that needs to be turned on for Revit to be able to do anything with that architect's model in regards to creating spaces. Now I can go ahead and start creating spaces in the model, but before I do that, notice that I have a space schedule listed under schedules and quantities in the browser if I open that, it's completely empty right now. I've got a few columns that I've created ahead of time to keep track of the space name, space number, room number, room name, and so forth. We'll take a look at that here in a second. So in level one, if I click on space, now when I hover over the model, Revit recognizes the entire boundary, and I can come through here and very quickly place spaces to represent each room. But there's a quicker way. Notice the Place Spaces Automatically button at the top. If I select that, Revit will automatically create 26 spaces for the rest of this floor that hadn't already been created. If I jump back into the schedule, notice that this schedule has automatically been populated with the space name and number of all of the rooms. Jump into Level 2 and I'm going to create a space place spaces automatically and allow Revit to do its magic. 38 spaces created automatically. Now again looking at this, the spaces, the space names and so forth and everything that you see inside of the schedule is just being created arbitrarily. The space name and the space number does not match the room name and the room number from the architect's model as we might like it to do. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and show you how this space naming utility comes into play. So let me go ahead and tile my views. I'm not going to look at the level two at the same time, but if I go ahead and tile these two, and maybe I'll just make the uh, space schedule a little bit smaller and my model window a little bit so that you can see what's going on here. 
and now if I make sure that your model view or your plan view is active before you go to the space naming utility if I select space naming utility from the external tools drop down it will bring a dialog box up giving me the option to choose names and numbers or names only, numbers only. I can also be very specific about which levels I would like to do. It's only going to recognize levels that have spaces in them. So since I didn't place any spaces in level three, it automatically knows that it can't do anything with that. I'm going to go ahead and click on the OK button and watch what happens. In a matter of seconds, the tags inside of the model have been updated to correspond with the architect's room names and numbers and everything inside of the schedule has been updated to reflect those name changes as well. As you can see in the model, every one of the space names have been updated to correspond with the architect's names. This is a huge time saver and I hope that you've enjoyed this video and something that I think that you will enjoy using and take advantage of right away as you continue learning how Revit MEP can become your tool of choice. Thank you very much for watching.